In this video, I'll be talking about Venn the Graph Generator. You might be asking yourself if you have no idea what it is, what the heck is a Venn the Graph Generator? And basically, to start talking about it, we need to understand what it's used for. And at the end, it all comes down to electrostatics. So I guess the next question would be, what is electrostatics? And electrostatics is a branch of physics that studies electric, electric charges at rest. Um, so one example is that some materials, they attract lightweight particles after rubbing. And that's basically what we're going to see with the Van der Graaff generator. Well, so now let's get to the point and talk about what really matters. The Van der Graaff generator. So now that we're actually talking about the generator, I'm going to explain it to you, everything since the beginning of it. So as any good science related thing, there's a history to it. So the first Van der Graaff generator was built in 1931 by the one and only Robert Van de Graaff. And that's why the generator is called Van de Graaff generator. Um, the purpose of building it was to use in the nuclear physics research. Um, so in the middle picture, you can see um, a schematic of a large research version of, of what Robert had in mind, which means, so basically that's what Robert planned on building and how it works. And I'm gonna get into more details in the next slide. And the picture on the right is the final result of Robert's project. So that's how it looked like after Robert built it and he put it in action. So now that we, now that we understand the history of it, we're going to get into understanding how the generator actually works and we're going to apply Robert's schematic into the results of the generator. So yeah, how does it work? Because I know it looks pretty cool. So before knowing how it actually works, let's just know what it's made of. So the Van de Graaff generator consists of a motor, two rollers, a belt, two brushes assemblies, and an output terminal, which is usually either a metal or aluminum sphere. So now we're on to actually talking about how the generator works. So the Van de Graaff generator it uses both smooth and pointed surfaces, and it also has conductors and insulators. Those together are gonna generate large static charges that would cause a large voltage on the generator. So now that we know more about the generator, we can look at Robert schematics again. So letter A on the picture is showing a battery that supplies excess positive charge to a point of conductor. Those are the points that spray the charge to a moving insulating belt near the bottom of the generator. So now that we've talked about letter A, let's talk about letter B. So letter B in the image indicates the point of conductor on top in a large sphere. The conductor picks up the charge that is passing by, and then this electric field at that point is so large that it removes the charge from the belt. So if you're wondering how the process that we just saw in B can be done, it's because the charge just doesn't stay inside of the conducting sphere. It actually moves to its outside surfaces. An ion source inside the sphere produces positive ions, which are accelerated away from the positive sphere to high velocities. Unfortunately, things don't always go as planned. The generators have practical limits. Those limits come up because the large electric fields polarize and eventually ionize surrounding material, which creates free charges that neutralize excess charge or allow it to escape. However, good news, voltages of 50 million volts are well working practical limits. Yes, this is the thing that makes your hair go up when you touch it. And this happens because when you touch it, you receive a positive charge. The hair being extended shows that both types of charge are there, but only positive charges are in excess. The repulsion of these positive charges causes the strands of hair to repel other strands and to stand up. A fun fact is that the world's largest air insulated Van der Graaff generator is the one built by Robert Van der Graaff back in 1931 and is now permanently displayed at Boston's Museum of Science. This generator has two conjoined 15 feet aluminum spheres standing in 6.7 tall columns and it can obtain 2 million volts. Goodness is that you can try this at home. All you need is a comb, your hair, and pieces of paper. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna rub the comb through your hair, and then you're gonna use it to leave pieces of paper. It might be helpful to torn the pieces of paper apart rather than just cut them neatly. And then you're gonna repeat the same thing in your bathroom after you had a long shower and the air in the bathroom is moist. And then you're gonna ask yourself two questions. First, is it easier to get electrostatic effects in dry or moist air? Second, 
Why would torn paper be more attractive to the comb than cut paper? Now you're able to understand that Van der Graaff generators are related to electrostatics and you're able to understand how they work. So basically you've mastered Van der Graaff generators in five minutes.